Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Have you listened to any of the Ask RC programs that I've been putting up on my YouTube channel? I don't know for sure what else to call them. They are, in one sense, very much another podcast. Uh, I have tried in the last mm, few months to to cut the Jesus Changes Everything podcast down uh, a few minutes so that it's not such a commitment to listen in. And then I can't get, uh, be quiet long enough to stop. So I start this new thing uh, that we call Ask RC. And I uh, just last week, uh, well, I'm not sure when this will be for when you hear this, but just recently, uh, I actually recorded an Ask RC asking the question, why do you record these Ask RCs? Uh, and I talked about my desire and my goals with the Ask RC, and that that my hope is both to serve uh, believers who have theological questions, uh, who are looking to learn more, but also, even more importantly, to uh, be of service to those who are outside the kingdom of God, who are wrestling with real and genuine questions, and to bring uh, sound biblical answers that are also, uh, by their nature, evangelistic. And uh, I have made the decision to uh, not sort of run these through the standard podcast uh, release systems, but only to post them on my channel on YouTube. I, I do uh, every day on Twitter and Facebook uh put a link up to each of them. I want to encourage you to give a listen, and I ask you to do so because I, uh, even especially this one, why do you do these Ask Our Seeds? Because I, I, my hope is it will, A, benefit you, and B, give you a, a clearer sense of where our heart at, is at here at Dunamis Fellowship, about what it is we're trying to accomplish overall. Jesus Changes Everything is a part of the ministry of Dunamis Fellowship, a, a strategic part, uh, a part that takes a lot of time and energy uh, and effort, but it's just a part of what we do. But it fits in with the overarching goals that we have, which are to make known the glory of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We want to make much of his name. So I want to ask you, if you are enjoying this podcast to, to, and you haven't yet given a try to uh, ask RC, it's only five minutes uh, and uh, there's lots of different topics, I would love for you to give a listen. I would also love to hear from you any suggestions that you would like for me uh, to cover in Ask RC, whether it's a question you actually have or whether it's a question you think might be helpful uh, to draw in the unbeliever and to begin uh, dialogue and conversation with the unbeliever. Now, I mentioned all this because you have found yourself in this week's segment devoted to seeking partners for our ministry. We want you to understand uh, not just the blessing of the content of Jesus Changes Everything, but the heart behind it and the heart behind Dunamis Fellowship and all that we're trying to do. We want uh, to have men and women who are uh, eager to come alongside us and to promote uh, a faithful biblical uh, understanding that is true and honest. Uh, that's one of the reasons, again, why we're doing the Ask RCs, because I'm wanting to ask the honest questions. So many of the questions uh, that I have done that are designed to bring in the unbeliever are the kinds of questions that look at 
uh, the failure of Christians. Why are Christians like this? Weren't our forefathers guilty of the worst kind of racism? Why are Christians so uh, nosy about the, the sex lives of pagans? Why are Christians uh, always shoving religion down my throat? And I'm, I'm coming and answering these kinds of questions again, honestly, not defensively, not, oh, that's not true. We're wonderful, wonderful people. We would never do anything like that. No, that's not the approach. Uh, the approach is, yeah, you, you've glommed on to uh, a sin problem that we've had. And let me tell you about the solution for the sin problem. And it will also solve your sin problem. We believe that there is a profound sickness in the church made up of what I would call fig leaf Christianity. Fig leaf Christianity is when we try to cover our own nakedness and our own sins. When we flee from God rather than flee to him, we're playing make-believe and dress up and acting like we're better than we are. So, again, central to our vision at Dunamis Fellowship is a level of honesty and openness that says, hey, uh, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against people. I've been sinned against and the solution isn't to pretend that it doesn't happen. The solution is to acknowledge it and to repent and to rejoice at the forgiveness that we are given in Christ. We want to, at Dunamis Fellowship, have everyone free to tell the truth so that everyone will flee to the truth. It's time for another Curating Your Movie Library segment, and I'm grateful once again to have my precious wife, Lisa, here with me. Hello, my sweet. Hi, Annie. Glad that you're here. Thanks for having me. Uh, hey, you know, um, we do watch a lot of movies. It's true. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're not always completely 100% frivolous in what we watch. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we watch things that are more consciously helpful for us. We spent quite a few times, uh, quite a few evenings along the way listening to... Documentaries. And some uh, good marriage things from mm -hmm. Jimmy Evans. Um, and mo just recently, we listened to uh, a YouTube teaching video uh, called... Talking about the Enneagram. Talking Is it dangerous? Things Christians should know. And it had Doreen Virtue, Melissa Daughtery, and Marsha Montenegro. Yes, mm -hmm. and three ladies, uh, very different. Uh, but all common because they were part of the New Age movement. Yes, exactly. And talking about the history and the background of this... Enneagram. Yeah, wildly popular... Uh, and moving into progressive Christian uh, culture. Yeah, uh, it's... And some would say it's it's a simple uh, psychological sort of personality, yeah, more personality uh, thing, um, and so it's it's used in a lot of businesses to try and get people in the right kind of work. But uh, its background is uh, kind of scary, and and what these ladies are and, and being misrepresented. In a sense, part of the message is, hey, this is so popular that this is people... so popular in the New Age world, in the secular world. Right. Let's bring it in and try to twist it and fit it into the Christian world. Yes, yeah. and, and it's gotten so popular in the Christian world that there's actual, almost a, a cover-up. Well, and you have uh, Navapress. Navapress? In, no, it was InterVarsity, yep. yep. Yeah. Uh, InterVarsity is... And really Zondervan. Good. Zondervan Reflective and Lifeway. And you've got, quote, Christian pastors who are writing books about, like, the sacred Enneagram who give, the one gentleman who wrote that said three of the people that, of the four that he was giving his hats off to were New Age right. uh, leaders. And one is a universal Lism kind of guy, uh, 
what, Roar, Roy, Roar, Rich Roar, Roar. Roar. Mm-hmm. yeah, and, he's a, not a good guy. Right, and, and this shows you the vulnerability of sheep. Yes. And it shows you, my friends, Jesus himself said in Matthew, well, it was 24 or 28, that the elect will even be deceived. And he said, see, I have told you ahead of time. You must know the word of God on your own. You don't need to read the book, The Road Back to You, because The Road Back to You is a sinner who needs Jesus. The Bible should be a reflective tool, not a personality test. Not It's not about you. Yeah. It is about God. Yeah, and that's, that's another uh, element that they cover in this, is how this sort of devolves down into a justification for my sins. Well, this is or, what I am. Right. Or I'm a number eight and I don't like number one. So it, it's this constant relationship of thinking, God does not care about what we think. Yep. He is telling us to change yes. and take on his mind. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that was really interesting to me was that the whole history of the background of this, because on the one hand, uh, there are those who are pushing to demonstrate that this is not just quackery that some nut job came up with on his own yesterday. And so they want to push it back into history and give it this uh, uh, credibility based on its age. And yet at the same time, other people are pushing in the other direction and wanting to say, oh no, this is all so scientific and, and new. And no one is saying, this comes from the Bible. You know, it's not, the truth is, it's not old. Well, they call it ancient. It came from ancient. And a lot of these publishers took off the word ancient. Because it's not. Credibility. And, and there have been even some of these folks um, tagging a comment from John Calvin saying, man must know himself. Yes. Out of context. Right. To try to connect Calvin. And there are PCA pastors bringing this into their churches. Yes. Whoa, right. churches. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, there was a story in the in the movie about... In the YouTube uh, yeah, yes, document. It's the, not a movie. But that's right. I'm yeah, sorry. Talk, kind of like a Zoom kind of a Yes, YouTube conversation uh, about one of these ladies talking to a pastor who was just very straightforward about this is a good tool to bring people into the church. This is how I wanted to... And, and so there was a... A lot of uh, background on the Enneagram, but yes. also background on why something like this is getting a toehold. Uh, and maybe that's even too uh, old that mm-hmm. it's much bigger than a toehold now. Mm-hmm. It's like an encampment mm-hmm. uh, inside the evangelical church. Uh, this is not um, some sort of screechy conspiracy theory uh, kind of uninformed uh, background DVD. These folks are, are, are well educated and specifically uh, I think brought on as, as sort of the subject matter expert was this Montenegro woman and, and who, who was an astrologer. She yes, a professional uh, licensed astrologer. And I liked what she said when she said People write her and say to her, but this Enneagram, it has shown me who I am. It has helped me. And she said her response was, millions of people are helped by astrology. Claim it every day. Those are doctrines of demons, folks. And this is what we want to understand. We don't get our hope and our help from demonic background and activity. If you have something replacing the word of God in your life to get to know you, you're on the wrong path. And you need to get on the right path. The Bible says it's a mirror. It is. And it shows mirror. us who we are. We don't need somebody else. And we, you know, somebody just recently had suggested that I I learn that. And I, when I saw it, I thought, Oh Lord, you know, when you know you've been around long enough, you've seen all these things kind of recircle. And thinking, God, there's just more to pray for. We're asking sheep to be wise, to know the tactics of the enemy, and to know the word of God and not stray. Amen. Well, thank you, sweetheart, for this uh, choice. That was you, you came up with this. You suggested that we watch this, and, and it was really very helpful to me. I hope others will check it out. And uh, as always, and let wow. us yeah, okay. and let us know what you think. God bless you. Love you, sweetheart. I love you too.
Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 18, 9 through 14. It is an unfair and gross distortion to hold that Roman Catholicism teaches justification by works, while we Protestants teach justification by faith. The more accurate distinction recognizes on both sides the necessity of the work of Christ. Rome affirms that his righteousness is necessary for our salvation, that without it, we are without hope. That righteousness, however, according to Rome, becomes ours through infusion. Protestants also affirm that his righteousness is necessary for salvation, that we have no hope without it. It, however, becomes ours through imputation. Well, some here are quick to affirm that our differences now amount to nothing more than a tempest in a teapot. We're arguing over two thick theological terms that are not a part of our ordinary language. Surely such nuance must be insignificant. But it's not, as Jesus' parable illustrates. Let's look at these two men, what they have in common, and what separates them. First, it is an unfair, gross distortion to hold that the Pharisee believes that he justifies himself all alone. How quickly we pass over the one good part of his prayer. Lord, I thank you. The Pharisee knows from whence came the power to make him righteous. He knows that he needed the grace of God, that God had to work in him, that God is due all the glory for his obedience. The publican likewise looks to God and his grace as his only hope. He knows where to turn, even as the Pharisee knows whom to thank. The difference, however, is here. The Pharisee believes that God's grace has made him whole, that he is now, albeit by the grace of God, just in himself. God helped him out. God stood him up. But now he is standing on his own two feet. He gives thanks to God that he is better than other men, that he doesn't commit this sin and that, and that he performs this duty and that. God has poured righteousness into him, and there he stands. The publican, on the other hand, knows what he still is, a sinner. The mercy he cries out for isn't that he would be made a saint, but that he would be a forgiven sinner. He cannot cooperate he cannot stand. He can only, and even this is the grace of God, cry out for the mercy of God, which is found in Christ alone. The bigger difference than the differing approaches of these two men, however, 
is what it meant for their eternities. Only one of these two men went home justified. Only one of these two men was an adopted son of the living God. Only one of these two men will spend eternity walking with God in paradise. The other will spend eternity weeping and gnashing his teeth. Teapot tempests have no such eternal consequences. In our feel-good, dumbed-down, ecumenical age, we find distinctions distasteful. In the faithful preaching of our Lord, he demonstrates the differences they make. That said, may we who are Protestant, Evangelical, and Reformed protest against our own propensity to cry out, I thank you, Lord, that I am not like other men, Arminians, Semi-Pelagians, or even this fundamentalist. I score high on all theology exams and have a library that is the envy of my friends. Instead, let us, consistent with our theology, beat our breasts and cry out, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsprouljr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.